and good night, friends and colleagues from around the world. Today, uh, we have only one webinar. And uh, uh, the news is that uh, we have surpassed 960,000 peers reached. And uh, today, we are turning our uh, attention to Greece, Athens, Greece, and Budapest, Hungary. Uh, with us, we have Dr. Ioannis Grogopoulos as the hosting, uh, as the host and uh, moderator, as well as Dr. Botan Simon that has joined us with a wonderful presentation uh, pertaining applications of intraoral scanners to identify uh, certain things of interest. So um, let's go ahead and uh, uh, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us from uh, two far, far areas of the world. Greetings from Athens, Greece. I'm glad to be here with all of you, of you. and it's an honor to have with us here today Dr. Uh, Botton uh, Simon from Hungary. And I'd like to say a few words about him. He is a young uh, DDS, a uh, young dentist, and has his degree from uh, University of Depression in Hungary. He has done also a three years specialty in uh, uh, restorative dentistry and prosthodontics in the Simi Wells University. And now he's a PhD student uh, in the same university. He's a member of many associations, uh, like the American Society of uh, Forensic Odontology, the Digital Dentistry Society International, the uh, Artificial Intelligence Coalition Hungary, the Hungarian uh, Dental Association. He's uh, vice uh, president of the Hungarian Association of uh, Aesthetic and Resource Dentistry and a board member of the Digital Dentistry Society of Hungary. Uh, Dr. Simon has uh, been published a um, few scientific uh, papers and today um, he is giving a lecture. He will give a lecture to all of us with title Application uh, of Intraoral Scanner to Identify uh, Monozygotic Twins. Dr. Uh, Simon, all of you, all yours. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Ioannis. Uh, I wanted to also do a quick introduction of our host. Uh, this is his first uh, session hosting with us today. And, uh, and uh, 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 Dr. Ioannis is uh, not, uh, not unfamiliar to many of us around the world. He's the founder of the World Academy of Stem Cells and Growth Factors. He's the region of the board of the Global Summits Institute, clinical professor at Bari University in Italy, and most recently, the head of dental school, BSBI Berlin. Now, let me give you a little bit more of information. He has five very, very prominent degrees uh, that he has earned in his uh, academic career. DDS, MD, PhD, MS, MBA. Dr. Ioannis, we thank you so much from, uh, from, uh, from our board uh, for all that you have done for us. And uh, thank you for hosting this session as we hand it over to Botan. Thank you very much. Greetings from Budapest. Let me just start my presentation. So thank you for this great opportunity to talk about my research. I would like to also thank you for inviting me to this dental famous club. It's, it's a true honor to be here. So hello everybody from all over the world. My name is Botton and I'm going to talk about my research on the application of intraoral scanner to identify monozygotic twins. If you have a twin brother or sister, or if you are a forensic odontologist, or if you love digital technology, I hope this lecture will give you something new and useful for you. But before I do this, let me tell you a few words about Hungary, where is Hungary and what Hungarians have. So this is my home country located in the heart of Central Europe. This is the homeland of Rubik's Cube. And lucky for us, Hungary has plenty of thermal water and the world's famous sweet wines as well. I speak the Hungarian language, which is the most hardest language in the world to learn. It's worth mentioning that Budapest, the capital city of Hungary, wins the Best Destination 2019 award. So I recommend you to visit Hungary and Budapest after we can travel again across the globe. 
I know it for sure. You will be amazed. We have famous Hungarian pioneers who invented, discovered something new, something innovative, something fascinating. Just to mention a few names, Ignaz Semmelweis, physician and scientist, now known as an early pioneer of antiseptic procedures. He is described as the savior of mothers. Semmelweis proposed the practice of wash washing hands and saved many mothers from childbed fever and maybe even for us from COVID-19. Albert Sengyorgyi won the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1937. He is credited the first isolating vitamin C and discovering the components and reaction of the citric acid cycle. And Hans Scheyer, he was the first who dem demonstrated the existence of biological stress. I think these gentlemen discovered something that could save our lives. If we wash our hands, take enough vitamin C and live our life without stress, we can live a longer, healthier and happier life. As you can see, we are a small country with great minds. Okay, let's go back to the original topic, application of intro scanner to identify monozygotic twins. I think this is a very complicated topic for those who see this for the first time. And believe me, this was pretty complicated for us, my team, for the first time as well. Because if we want to achieve this goal, to use an intro scanner to easily identify somebody I mean biometrically identify who has a twin brother or sister. We had to combine three different fields. First, digital dentistry. But what is the purpose of an intro scanner? To take an impression faster or more precise or even collect three dimen dimensional data to analyze? What is the purpose? For us, the purpose was the data acquisition. Second field, forensic odontology. I think this is a very niche segment of dentistry with a lack of digitalization. And we read a lot of scientific paper of forensic odontology and we saw that somebody needs to solve this issue to digitize forensic odontology. And third, twin research. When I was invited to the International Society for Twin Studies, Twin Registry Network meeting last year, I was the only dentist among researchers, the only dentist. So I think the most important thing is why we had started this research. And I can say because we believed we can create a quicker, cheaper, and more accurate solution to determine the zygosity of twins. We believed we can make a smarter, more reliable way to identify mass disaster victims to help DVI teams in the field. And we believed in the power of digital dentistry and the usability of intro scanner, scanners and digital samples. If you ask me how, I can see, say it's pretty simple. We want to achieve our goal to use intro scanner and, and um, I'm going to say we collect more and more digital samples from twins, comparing them with, uh, with each other. And um, if the reference element matches with the actual element, now you can see what we do in the name of application of intro scanner to identify monozygotic twins or anybody else. 
There are uh, approximately 91.7 million twins in the world and um, 28 million are monozygotic among them. And lucky for us, unfortunately for the investigators, identification of an MZ twin still passes obstacles in forensic science. The resemblance between monozygotic twins is not only a source of wonder, but also agrees for genetic and genomic studies because distinguishing one twin from another can be a ch challenging to even close family members. But I think challenge is accepted. So this task, distinguishing the identities of the monozygotic twin pair is also a challenge in many practical situations from the airport security check to uh, criminal investigation or to disaster victim identification. DNA-based identification is a proper high specificity method in most situations. However, its, li it's license could be challenged in the case of monozygotic twins having almost identical DNA. Further identification methods include the registration of external features of the body by two or three dimensional scanning, which could be complicated because of the soft tissue, which is covering the body, dynamical changes due to the plasticity. If you want to develop an uh, automatic high accuracy recognition method, it requires a stable object over time and during the measurement. Face characteristic could be changed by accident, plastic surgery, aging, disease, change of weight, and, and so on, so on. So the fingerprint is not identical, but very, very similar between twins. But the devil is in the details. As we all know, fingerprints can be easily ruined by accident, such as fire, water, or on purpose. Those small damages could prevent identification. Heart tissues are um, relatively stable at this certain age and show no plasticity. Nevertheless, bony imaging requires X-ray radiation, which is not always possible due to ethical reasons maybe. And um, it's pretty hard to easily identify the victim without a proper solid antimortem administration system, especially in the analog way. Why not digital? So what can be the missing link? Is it enough to have uh, DNA sequencing or uh, fingerprint recognition and uh, dental records to identify? I think the answer is no. It's not enough. We need something new. I hope so. So what can be this new thing or new field? Patarugue patterns have been studied for uh, personal identification in the field of forensic odontology. And uh, it has been suggested to, that the considerable differences exist between subjects. The anterior part of the palate is well pr protected by the teeth and the maxillary bone the buccal pad of fat, the lips, and the neocranium. Although orthodontic treatment and extraction affect some parts, but not all. And this is very important. And the shape of the rugae have remained constant during orthodontic treatment. So the palatal rugae and their role in forensic odontology should be revisited as a reliable method of human identification 
thanks to the development of digital dentistry, the three-dimensionally digitalized palette make, makes it possible to accomplish geometrical measurements with high accuracy. And to develop an automatic pattern recognition method by artificial intelligence. Okay, so the superimposition of partial scans and the calculation of surface deviation could uh, eliminate the former approach when the ident identification was made by the visual quest classification of partial rugae, which means maybe, but maybe we can replace the old fashioned rugae classification into a new one. Why? why it's necessary because from 7036 7036 after winslow first described the pata Ruge and lizelle in 1950 who established the new classification of Ruge pattern nobody wanted to establish a new digitally based classification method so be so we believe this time has come Uh, the exponential growth of an intro scanners in dental offices makes the data acquisition familiar in everyday practice. So I'm asking for your help and please, if you want to or can, pretty please send me upper STL files with the whole palette. You can see my uh, email address below. I really want to analyze as many as I can to establish a proper classification method. And I want to collect 1,000 samples by uh, the end of May. So it's a, it's a very hard uh, challenge for me. If you can help me, please do so. Thank you in advance. So the, how precise is it? The precision of uh, internal scanners for palatal digital impressions have been investigated recently. Dr. Manito and his team from the Medical University of South Carolina found the precision to be between 69 microns and 117 microns, depending on the applied internal scanner system. So we propose the method using an intro scanner to make registration of the full palette for human identification, the uniqueness of forensic features is often criticized because of studies not conduct conducted in a proper manner or due to the utilization of, the, of a small subject population. So to overcome this problem, which is a pretty uh, uh, big problem, we assume that uh, if subjects who resemble each other by phenotypic features the most are reliable sources of examination and could be acceptable as a feature of uniqueness. As far as we are concerned, monozygotic twin pairs have the most phenotypic similarity. So the question is whether the morphology of the human palate could differentiate between siblings of monozygotic pairs and whether the internal scanners are reliable enough to detect small differences. If yes, we can do biometric human identification with the use of intro scanner. So the first goal was to determine the reproducibility of palatal scans. And our second goal was to assess the deviation of palatal scans between siblings within monozygotic twin pairs.
in Hungary, we have a population-based twin registry. So more than 200 participants were selected, were selected from the Hungarian twin registry database. And the Hungarian twin registry is now a population-based registry. Uh, and uh, with, with a database of more than 120,000 Hungarian twins. So it's, it's a huge twin population-based registry. As maybe you can see, these egotic pairs were also included for comparison and for control group. These egotic twins share approximately 50% of their genetic material, while the monozygotic twins are almost 100% identical regarding their genetics. One monozygotic twin pair was um, excluded from the, the analysis because we failed to make a proper parental scan. Uh, and this twin pair has a Marfan syndrome with the highly arched palate. Uh, if you see a Marfan syndrome uh, person, then you can imagine how highly arched uh, the parts are. So the age of twins was between 17 and 74. So a large scale of uh, age and twins, and the mean age was 32. The portal area was, uh, the portal area of uh, each subject was scanned with the, with an emerald intraoral scanner by a zigzag scanning pattern starting from the incisive papilla and finishing at the border of the hard and soft palate. Every scan was repeated three times. So we, we made three replicates. I was the one who, who did all the scans, so more than 600 scans. Each scan was exported as an STL file into the GOM inspect software for uh, data evaluation and uh, surface comparison. Before every alignment, these were cut off from the replicates what you can see on the picture B. And of course, we uh, exported the, um, the new uh, scan, uh, scans, the palette, and, and uh, imported back again uh, for analysis. So we standardized the methods for the future. So we, we set up two methods to evaluate our scan. The first, method was um, intra-subject deviation. So just to imagine, each scan of the same subject was aligned to each other. And uh, the mean surface deviation for the free alignments were calculated. So we, that's why we, we called this intra-subject deviation, because we compared the replicates. With each other. The second method was the intra twin deviation method, and the mean deviation between replicates of different siblings, but within the twin pair. So we take the twin pair and compare them, the pair uh, subject with each other. So within the twin pair, we call this. That's why we call this intra-twin deviation method. OK, so just uh, now you can imagine uh, I symbolized uh, it uh, with uh, apples. So here we uh, have the three replicates uh, from each subject. Replicate one, replicate two, and replicate three. 
So we compared the scans of the same subject three times. And the deviation was calculated after surface comparison, but you can see on the right. So the heat map shows the small surface deviations between the samples. In the, the other method, the intra-twin deviation method, we compared the twin pairs portal scans to each other, like I mentioned before, and we did nine comparison, comparisons. And the mean deviation was calculated as the ratio of uh, these two parameters in order to get the absolute mean surface deviation. And now let me show you the results. The mean intra-subject deviation of the palatal scans was 35.3 microns. So we observed no differences in intra-subject uh, deviation method between the mono and dizygotic twins. Why is it important? Because uh, if I don't use twins uh, for uh, comparison, if I use uh, me, my, my samples or yours, I hope we can uh, have the same results. So the calculated upper tolerance interval was uh, 67 microns with 99% coverage of the population, which is very high, and with 95 confidence interval, which is the uh, usually uh, used uh, confidence interval rate. So it was 68, so one micron higher, micron higher, with 99% uh, coverage, and with 99 confidence interval. And please grab your chair. It was 95 microns with the 99.999% population coverage and with 99 confidence interval. The lower boundary means what you can see on the, the, the uh, picture, the, the graph, the lower boundary, pay attention please, uh, the lower boundary means that 99 measurements of 100 expected to be under this level with 95% certainty. So due to the relatively large sample size and the high precision of uh, the palatal scans, we were able to increase both the population coverage and the confidence to 99.999% and 99% respectively. Which means that 99% 999,000 measurements of the intra-subject deviation will result in lower than 95 microns from 100,000 measurements. I think it's incredible. So the superimposition of the two scans of the same subject always resulted in a smaller deviation value than the deviation between two scans within siblings of the same monozygotic pair, twin pair. The mean intra-twin deviation of 132 participants, so they were all monozygotic, was significantly higher than the intra-subject deviation values, 411 microns versus 37 microns, more than 10 times higher, 
you can see no overlap between the two methods, which means this can be the key of human identification. And we can tell with this method who is who, even if they are monozygotic twins. So this study aimed to assess the precision of partial interval scans in order to distinguish identical twins based on partial morphology. The reproducibility of partial interval scans was assessed by calculating surface deviation between scans of the same individuals. This 35.3 microns intra-subject deviation is better than it was found in previous studies presenting a range between 55 to uh, 117, which is very good. And uh, in forensic science or forensic identification, at least two scans, so we recommend you this, at least two scans are necessary for control purposes. After aligning the two scans, it is recommended to make a new new scan if the measure, uh, measured deviation value is higher than 92 microns. So we can use this method for quality control. Based on, on our findings without overlap region, we could separate the intra-twin deviation values from the intra-subject deviation values by 99% tolerance limit with 99% confidence. This result suggests that the morphology of palate between members of monozygotic twin pairs is different despite their uh, almost identical DNA sequence. So, using a portal scan for identification in forensic odontology has distinct advantages. The portal area remains more or less intact through life compared to, to the teeth, which continually changes due to the dental treatment. I think it is less vulnerable to external impact than other exter external surface structures, such as the fingerprints, and the comparison can be much cheaper than DNA sequencing. So, in conclusion, the superimposition of uh, interval scans of the palate could be a quick, easy, and um, highly reliable way for disaster victim identification. And uh, before I finish my lecture, I'd like to thank you for my team to help me a lot in this research. Thank you, Laura and Claudia, the twin dental students who inspired me and helped me a lot. My mentor, Professor Vag, who lead the research and the team of the Hungarian Twin Registry, especially the two famous radiologists, the Tarnoki twins, and a very talented twin researcher, Dora Mericher, and all the twins who came to us. And um, I'd like to thank you for watching me. It was a true honor to be on this virtual stage if you have questions, please let me know. I hope I can answer them because it's a pretty hard uh, research and a pretty hard topic, I know. And um, I really hope I, I didn't cause any double vision uh, with so many twins. And um, please don't forget to send me upper STL5s if you can, and um, or if you want to collaborate on projects like this, Please let me know. You can you can write my uh, you can see my email. You can write me an email anytime, and um, more than welcome to to visit Hungary. And uh, today 
it was a big day for me because we, me and my father just opened our clinic. So my father and I opened uh, our clinic. You can see on the pictures. Um, I hope we can save many teeth, many heart tissues. We can make happier, healthier, and prettier patients with uh, with smile on it on the on the face and um, i hope um, i truly hope the smile is the prettiest thing you you can wear so so please smile each and every day and thank you for watching me simon uh, congratulations because really it was a very interesting lecture and very different and I'd like to ask you if you can repeat the purpose of your study, please. The goal of your study. If you can repeat. The, yeah, the, the goal of, of our st study. So we, we wanted to, to establish uh, a quick, easy, and highly reliable way to, to help the DVI teams on the field to make disaster victim identifications easier. This was the, the original goal. And the, the second goal was uh, if we can tell the, the zygosity of the twins uh, with an intro scanner or, or with the palatal scan, who is monozygotic or, or who, who is not monozygotic. If I see a, 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 a tons of twins in a hat, a samples, can I uh, say properly who is monozygotic or, or who, who is not? And uh, this will be uh, our second uh, goal, but we need to collect more and more samples to, to determine the zygosity as well. I think, I think it's very useful and very interesting. Thank you very much for this Thank you very uh, much. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, thank you for uh, this, uh, this interesting uh, uh, presentation and congratulations on your new uh, practice you're opening up. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. How did you structure the ergonomics? Uh, it looks like a very beautiful scenario. Tell us about it. Uh, I can share my screen if you can see. So we have two chairs and um, uh, you can see on the top it's a, a wall decoration or or uh, the upper decoration just to to increase the the size of uh, the room and uh, we truly hope uh, if we treat the patients the patient can see these pictures uh, relax uh, more precise uh, and and uh, in, relax in a proper way and and uh, enjoy the treatment so so everything is uh, is uh, I, I think everything is ergonomic. Uh, you can you can pull the the gloves and and uh, everything fr from uh, from the wall and uh, the assistant uh, cannot place a mess on the table. So so I I don't like the mess on the table. So yeah, that's all. And it's located in, in Budapest. Very good. That is a uh, that is a uh, wonderful. We have another question coming in here. Uh, can this technique be used in conjunction with mentally maternity? Maternity. Uh -huh. maternity hospitals. Uh, I, I I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. But uh, we need more samples to to say it. Um, maybe. If we have enough samples, we can we can say uh, the the splitting phase of the twins. Because if I, I compare the the twins, uh, the the monozygotic twins uh, uh, have uh, three splitting phases: it's the, the early straight stage, the normal stage, and the 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 later stage. And who doesn't split? This can be the um, how can I say? Yeah. 
so this will be com complicated but anyway if we can uh, compare the samples maybe we can we can tell uh, about the the time of the splitting And there's also another question. Um, any role of uh, diagnosis of conventional uh, uh, matis? Uh, maybe, but uh, we don't have enough samples to, to say uh, something useful. So that's why I'm asking you to, to send me samples to, to analyze more and more. But it's a good, good, good question, though. I hope to help. I have a lot of people to help you on that. A lot of colleagues. So they send you the STL files uh, to your email, and how does that work? What is the cost involved? Uh, what? How does this work? Uh, uh, cost for for who? For your analysis. Are you doing it uh, for gratis? Are you doing it for free for them? Yeah, yeah, I I, I do it it for free, and and uh, my my PhD uh, depends on it. So so uh, we analyze the data, we we um, we measure the data. So if you can send me STL files, uh, we can we can analyze it. We we are happy to analyze it. So so that, that's why I mentioned uh, if you want to to collaborate or or uh, work together, we are happy to co collaborate. There's a chance that your mailbox might get swamped now. Good luck with this. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. All right, gentlemen, um, <clears throat> with that said, <clears throat> if there are no other questions, I think we can close the session. And uh, we look forward to uh, collaborating with Athens and uh, Budapest and, uh, and uh, continuing our, uh, our uh, mission toward getting all of this education into the hands of our colleagues. Please note that uh, tonight we are on track to reach over 1 million. Tomorrow, Dr. Gordon Christensen, the father of modern dentistry, will be uh, uh, hosted. And, uh, and uh, we hope to make a very big announcement at that time. And uh, thank you for all the 150 plus dentists that have uh, uh, partnered up in this peer-to-peer -peer platform to uh, contribute their time and to bring this knowledge to our colleagues. Our videos will permanently, for now, stay up on the video section of the Facebook page where anyone can access it at any time they wish. Uh, if there are uh, people that have missed the show or wish to have uh, a CE, there's some administrative fees involved uh, to properly do it uh, for uh, based on the guidelines. It's outsourced to a different company. And you are welcome to uh, watch the sessions anytime and, uh, and get CE uh, that way. Or you can go to the Facebook page and watch them free of charge at any time, anywhere. We thank you all for your collaboration and we're coming to the end line of this project. Uh, we're down to 12 days. Thank uh, gentlemen, thank it you so a much. It's pleasure. Thank you very much you. for watching me and inviting me. So I hope we can see each other very soon. It was a, it was a unique, uh, unique. Uh, you represented Hungary. Dr. Ioannis is doing Greece. There's over 70 countries involved. We're all one in this profession. We come together for what we love the most, which is knowledge and education and uh, uh, better ways to care for our patients. So we thank you all for what you do for our industry and for your contribution again to this project. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.